The terms agile and estimations don't really align very well. You see, agile is all about responding to change rather than following a plan. But if you want to give an estimate for work to be completed, well, that implies having a plan that probably isn't going to change. It's a very, very difficult circle to square. Nevertheless, management, stakeholders, scrum masters, product owners, and even developers want to have some sort of a, a timeline and idea on when things are going to get done, which is where the idea of agile estimates come in. Now, what I want to do is I want to share with you five different strategies for doing agile estimates. And let me just say right off the bat, some of these strategies are not that agile, starting off with the calendar day estimation, which is the one that we're going to talk about next. So the first agile estimation strategy is just calendar days. That's it. Given this feature, it's going to take me this many days to do. That's it. It's not very agile. It kind of implies that there's a, a plan to get it done. And it's very easy for everybody to understand. This task is going to take three days to do. Now, one thing about calendar day estimations, you should never have anything on a project that takes more than five calendar days, certainly not on an agile scrum Kanban type of project. If it gets to that many days, you want to break it down into something smaller because five days is just too long to have any hope of any accuracy for time effort estimation but calendar days that's the first one it's the simplest one i don't know how agile it is but it's one of the ways that teams will estimate the effort required to complete a task or a feature the second agile estimation technique is the ideal day in the load factor and in fact this is where the idea of story points originally came from a long, long time ago. Developers were looking at their work and they'd say, that is going to take me a day to do. But I keep getting pulled into stupid meetings. I keep going into stand-up meetings that go long. Fire alarms keep going off. I can't have a full day of work nonstop. And so what they would do is they would apply a load factor and they'd say, okay, it's one ideal day to do that. but..." You know what, uh, it'll probably actually take three actual days because of all the interruptions and context switching that I have to deal with. And so that's the second agile estimation technique, estimating ideal days to do a particular task and then multiplying it by a load factor. Now the third agile estimation technique, which might actually get into something a little bit more agile is story point. The idea of story points is not to try and pin a number of hours or days to complete a particular task, but instead it's supposed to be used to compare the relative effort of different stories in the backlog. So you might have one story in the backlog that is really simple to do. And you say, that's one point. You know, I can get that done in an hour or two. Right? And then there's other stories and there's like, well, I can't get that done in an hour, but it's not going to take all day. So maybe that's like two points. And then, well, there's something in the backlog that might take, it's definitely going to take a day, maybe a little bit more, maybe even two days. And then maybe you assign that three points. And then when you start thinking, okay, maybe it's three or four days, that's five points, a full week, maybe that's eight points. And if it's more than a week, maybe it's about 13 points. And as soon as developers start looking at a store and they say that's 13 points or 21 points, really what they're saying to you is they're saying, I have no idea how long this would take. I would, as a scrum master, I would never ever allow a story worth 21 points on my board. I would say to the developers, you got to break that down into a bunch of stories of eights and, and fives. So that's the idea of story points is to take the, the bugs and the features and the stories and the tasks and the product backlog and just assign relative weights to them, right? Just kind of these story point estimates. When we use story points, we use Fibonacci numbers. So we go one, two, three, five, eight, right? That's that, that series of numbers where the number is the sum of the two previous uh, numbers. We use that because as you start to get, you know, beyond the number eight to 13 and 21, it just becomes uh, a huge jump in value. And that, you know, essentially tells us and, and emphasizes the fact that, you know, the more points that you assign to it, the more you're saying, I just don't know how long this is going to take. The cone of uncertainty just widens out and it becomes just a crapshoot for the effort. Now this agile estimation technique is a bit of a funny one. It's t-shirt sizes. With story points, story points are supposed to help teams gauge the relative effort of tasks, bugs, features, stories. But story points have really kind of 
evolved into a mapping of points to time effort, points to how many days this is going to take to get done. And that's problematic in the world of, of Agile because we don't like giving you know hard numbers to it. So to get away from that, to break away from that, a lot of teams are now using t-shirt sizes where it's not necessarily mapped to an actual amount of effort. It's really just mapped to how different backlog items, how different features relate to each other, their, their relative effort. And so there is the extra small t-shirt, something that can be done real easy. A small t-shirt, which maybe takes a day or two to do, a medium, which is going to be harder than that small. Now you got a large story, which, you know, is starting to push that cone of uncertainty a little bit wider. And then you've got the extra large story. It's really supposed to be a much more agile way of allowing developers to look at the work in the product backlog and then just create a, a relative estimation of what's going to take more effort than other things. The other thing too, I just want to emphasize this is when people get into that extra large story, that extra large task, really what they're, they're telling you is that they just don't know and they might need more information from the product owner on what's needed what's required maybe the, re the requirements aren't there maybe the technologies to implement it may need to be discussed in the team so that people have a, a better idea of the path forward or implementing in it but generally an extra large story well that should probably be broken down into some mediums and some small so they're a little bit more manageable for the team now here's your fifth and last agile estimation technique, and that's just doing no estimates. A lot of managers can't handle this, works best on small teams with motivated developers, but the fact is, you know, estimates are just that, they're, they're estimate. And there's a margin of error, and sometimes the margin of error is big, and sometimes it's small. And, you know, if you've got a team of motivated developers, if you've got a team of people that just wants to get things done, if you've got a, a team of developers that are just working hard and moving forward why are you wasting their time asking them to assign a t-shirt size or story points to the work they're doing just let them get on with it because they can give you an estimate but their estimate's going to be wrong and if their estimate's wrong then well then you're going to get upset and stakeholders are going to get upset you know it just causes a lot of, of problems instead why not just allow the developers to go forward and develop work hard, be motivated, move forward, and as they develop, have them push their changes into a continuous delivery environment that allows stakeholders and managers to see how they're progressing. So rather than having estimates of what's going to get done and when, the stakeholders and the managers can actually run the application as it stands, look at features as they get developed, interact with the applications and give feedback so that we are actually doing agile development. It's not an easy one to do, but there really is a big push in the industry right now away from estimates and that, that no estimates movement is growing strong. So there you go. Those are your five agile estimation techniques, just calendar days, then ideal days, and story points, which are probably the most popular, t-shirt sizes, which gets a little bit more agile. And then again, if we're responding to change instead of following a plan, maybe, just maybe, having no estimates is the right way to go forward.